Amolga Diaz with the Junior Tour powered by Under Armour. 12-year-old Nico Gorra Cronderos was known as one of the best young golfers who had not won a national championship on the Junior Tour powered by Under Armour. Year after year, this amazing junior golfer would consistently finish in the top 10 at UA Summer Nationals, UA Winter Nationals, and UA Worlds. But he was never atop the leaderboard at the end of those major tournaments. Until this happened. Okay, and your 2024 Junior Tour powered by Under Armour, Summer National Champion from Sarasota, Nico Gordic Rondeau. Yeah. All I do is be a real So many tournaments that you've played in and so many tournaments that you have come so close but you are now a summer national champion how is that feeling for you it's a great feeling it uh, it's really shown that all the work i've put into it all the runner-ups or the top fives and top eights that i've had they just motivate me a lot to try and play the best i can to be out there and just enjoy the game and if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, I know I did everything I can. Did you know that you shot the lowest rounds in the entire tournament today? No, I didn't know. Well, how does that feel to find out right now? Uh, it feels good. Second place on the 2022 Junior Tour Powered by Under Armour Summer Nationals. Congratulations. Thank you. What would you tell yourself when you were coming so close and fighting so hard to get that win and just shortly out of reach. A couple shots away. Yeah, you got to review the round and see what you could have done better, what can you improve, and what can you keep on doing as good as you have been doing. So speaking about getting better, you kind of came from behind on that final round at Summer Nationals. How did you get your mind into that position? I just played solid. I didn't make many putts until the final last holes throughout the back nine. It was a bit of a struggle, but I knew that all it takes is one shot that changes your entire round. And it came on that 15th hole, that 30 foot putt for par that I had. That just gave me so much momentum. And it just felt like the hole became bigger and I could make a lot of putts. And it felt like I was more in control of my game. Tell me about that amazing shot from the bunker on 16. It was, it was great. I, I had a feeling that I could make it. I went up, picked my landing spot. I wasn't thinking of it rolling out that much, but I caught it nicely and it landed right where I wanted. And instead of having that one little hop and rolling out, it kind of took a, like, a big hop and it rolled out. I was planning on it to being a bit short and it rolled out a bit long and it was great because it let me with a tap in distance. Now tell me about that amazingly long putt that almost went in for birdie on 17. It was great. I thought it was gonna go in. It didn't go in, but I was just wanting to have a good speed. And if it didn't go in, I wanted it to be close so I could secure the par and still keep that momentum I had going into the last hole. Speaking of the last hole, were you playing defense at that point when you saw that your competitor got in trouble uh, just before your next shot? My caddy wanted, wanted me to lay up and give myself just a third shot and a look for par, but I told him I didn't want to do that. And I was feeling really comfortable with uh, my go-to three-quarter shot with the hybrid. So he told me, are you sure you don't want to just grab a, a gap wedge and put it in the fairway? And I told him, nah, give me the hybrid. I felt like confident. I, I knew I had practiced that shot so much and I knew I had pulled it off in the first day. So I just hit the shot, trusted it, and it ended up great. My family always told me the last three holes are the most important ones. And the round and the tournament is not over until that last shot has fallen. And who knows what can happen on that last shot. So how did it feel coming off the 18th green? You won, you know you're the summer national yeah. champion and I'm running up to you to put a microphone in your face. I was uh, a bit excited, and I did, but I didn't know how to take it because it was the first time I got interviewed in a tournament, but I liked it a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 champion of the 12 to 14 boys division for summer nationals, Nico Gordick. It was a nice question that I got asked and felt like I had played a decent to good round and I could uh, review and recap all of those. It feels amazing. How did it feel to see it? your friends all ran up to you to hug you and congratulate you? It was awesome. I have known them since I was seven, eight years old and I know that they had played a great tournament so I wanted to be happy and congratulate them as well as I was congratulating uh, 
myself for, and my other uh, fellow companions and family for helping me play a good tournament. When you've come so close, coming in second place uh, to getting that championship, is there a moment that you look back and you compare the two, your, your second place and your championship, and say, I did this different and that's what helped me? Yes, yes there is. Um, yeah, when, when, you, when I came in second, I played great golf. I, I loved that course I played on, same PGA National course. Um, yeah, it was great. I just feel like I left maybe a couple more shots there. The par fives were more gettable. I didn't take full advantage of them. Still played them solid. There were a couple holes that I felt like the, the approach shots could have been better. But when I won, I just had, I didn't play the best golf I've played before. I just had to stay patient and play solid and just know that one shot is going to be the one that's giving you all the momentum you can and you can uh, figure anything out with your mentality. Daniela, as a golf pro, you played golf in college, so yes, like I said, Nico was born into golf. What would you say is the best part of Nico's game? I think the best part of Nico's game is his short game. Um, he loves to um, work on his short game and he really enjoys playing uh, chipping and putting competitions with his friends. As a golf pro, do you feel that that has helped him in growing his game? I think it does help. I think uh, the fact that you know about the sport allows him to have a little bit of um, more experience for his age because of all the golf that not only me but everybody in the family played. Um, especially golf is a, it's a game of the mind. It's uh, such a tricky game that it, I think it's important to have a little bit of knowledge about the game. It, it does help. Nico, you were pretty much born into golf, but when did you actually start playing golf? I started playing when I was uh, one year and 10 months old. That's when I first grabbed a, a plastic golf club and I started swinging it around. My parents didn't know what I was going to be. They're a lefty or righty, so they bought me the club with the two sides I had. And I just started swinging it the left-handed way, and that's how it became natural for me. I'm interested in knowing how you guys got into the game of golf, coming from a country like Colombia, where it's not a popular sport. We were born in, in, um, into a golfer's family. So everybody from my grandparents um, to my parents, my uncles, aunts, we were all golfers. Golf was just something everybody did, so that's just how we got into golf. We are uh, from Bogota, and uh, Bogota is um, actually a very beautiful place full of wonderful golf courses. It's nothing like uh, the United States in terms of like how many golf courses there are, but no, Bogota had a pretty good amount of golf courses and uh, we, were, we were always very lucky um, to have the club that we have and we, we were raised very happily there and we had a lot of really good friends that, you know, we played golf with. The first thing that everyone notices about Nico is how tall he is. He went through an incredible growth spurt. Has that hurt his game in any way? I think that um, height is only going to help him. I think that um, you know, the taller he is, however God wants him to be, is going to be fine. Uh, obviously, for um, power, you would say a, a tall guy doesn't have to generate that much speed in order to hit the ball far. So I'm thinking that that's an advantage, right? Um, so I, you know, we're just very happy with how they were created. And I've always had friends and my family they're pretty tall. I'm the shortest in my family. And if that's what he's got, that's what, what he's going to be playing with. You know? Has it been a little bit of a challenge or learning curve for you to, to coach him as he's gone through these incredible growth spurts during that time? Correct. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, because he's never really had um, like a compact body, it's challenging for him. You know, obviously, uh, if a normal average size um, student moves a little bit, he's still gonna have good contact with the ball. Being so tall, if Nico moves a little bit, that's gonna be like a miss. So it is challenging, but as I said, it only helps him to get better because he has to be much more precise and he has to work so much harder to get there. What would you say sets the Junior Tour Power by Under Armour apart from every other tour that you play? It's a great tour. It's fun, it's friendly. 
it just feels like a good tour for the people that uh, love the game of golf. You've had him play in many tournaments, um, many tours. What is it about the Junior Tour powered by Under Armour that you guys like so much? We didn't know the Under Armour Tour existed, but when we were introduced um, to the tour by some friends playing uh, friends of Nico, then it's like our whole life changed. Um, in terms of like um, happiness, in terms of like support, it's like a family. It's like a very big family. Every time we play the event, it doesn't matter if we place or we don't place. It's just a, a way for us to enjoy. We love it. We love competing in the Under Armour. I feel that the tour is all about the kids. Um, the tour just wants to put the kids in the spotlight, wants to give the kids the best that can be offered to the kids. I'm, I'm sure that it's about the families too, you know, like um, they put on shows for the families, they make dinners for everybody to gather together and have a seat and chat about, you know, how we're doing, how's the golf, how's life. So it's like a big family, like we enjoy going because we've made so many great um, friends and we love every single aspect of it. How excited are you? that uh, Winter Nationals is going to be right back at PGA National where you got your championship. I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm all for it. I love that course. Destin was fun too, but I think PGA National has more of a legacy that you can't compare to and especially one of their courses being built by Jack Nicklaus is just amazing. As a mom, what are your golf dreams for Nico? Oof. Uh, I don't think I have dreams for him. I think that I want to support his dreams. So whatever dreams he has, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it my all to support his dreams, but my dreams stop where his dreams end. So whatever he's dreaming about, that's what I'm gonna be going for, whether it's becoming a golf professional, whether it's becoming a, a wonderful professional in any other um, you know, subject of um, work, whatever Nico wishes for, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to support him. How proud are you that he is known as one of the nicest kids on the tour. Wow, you know, that it's almost going to make me want to cry because that's the, that's I think the goal of every parent. I, I hope that's the goal. That's, that's my goal. I mean, whether they make it as professional golfers or the most important part is uh, love, you know, and if, if they see my child as a loving child, then that means makes me happy as a mom. That means I probably did a good job.